Hello. In this video today, I'll be talking about the two different main types of cooling for a CPU. To begin with, let's start off with the most the simpler uh, form of cooling, which is air cooling. So the way that air coolers actually work is that when you attach your cooler to the CPU, there is there is a, a contact point where uh, th uh, heat is transferred from the CPU into the base of the cooler. Then that heat it gets transferred through the uh, through the cooler uh, fins and pipes into this fin stack. Then uh, uh, a fan is used to uh, blow air through the fin stack, and that uh, that causes the heat to be transferred from the fin stack into the atmosphere, and that's what actually cools down your CPU. That is the basic concept of how cooling air cooling works uh, with a CPU. The same, the same is true with uh, a GPU as well. There's, there's a contact point where uh, there's a contact point between a heating element in a, a GPU, and uh, the pipes and fins that uh, transfer the heat away from the GPU and into the atmosphere. Air cooling is really practical when building a PC because it's very simple to install. All you need, all you need is just a couple of screws, some thermal paste, and the actual cooler itself. It's very simple and straightforward. And the air cooling, uh, the performance you can get from an air cooler isn't even bad at all compared to a water cooler. Like they're they're head to head when it comes to uh, thermal performance. Now that we've established how air coolers work, let's look at what how water coolers perform and how they function. Firstly, let's look at the two different types of water cooling. So there's where water cooling where you build your own loop and stuff called AIOs or all-in-one liquid coolers. These all-in-one liquid coolers are basically are much simpler to use and set up and is what I recommend to beginners who want to use water cooling in their next build. However, in both in both instances, the same elements are used to cool your uh, PC using water. To begin with, let's look at what these elements actually are and talk about how the cooler performs. So uh, in a liquid cooler, in a liquid cooling loop, there is uh, a pump that circulates water through the loop, which is pretty pretty self-explanatory. Then there is tubing that connects all the different parts uh, with each other. That's also pretty pretty simple. Then lastly, there is something called a rad or a radiator, where water where there's a densely packed fin array of met of metal with uh, water with tubes of water going through it that uh, exchange heat from from the water to the metal and then to the atmosphere again. There are fans that attach to these radiators that that go th uh, that push air through the fin stack that eventually uh, transfer the heat away from a CPU into and into the atmosphere. However, when you build your own loop, there's an extra component that is optional but really recommended in most builds. It's called a reservoir. This is a thing that you attach your uh, your pipes too that makes filling your loop much easier because that because when you build your own loop you will have to fill it with uh, some sort of uh, liquid most people use just distilled water uh, and uh, some corrosion inhibitors and growth inhibitors because uh, that that stuff can happen in a loop uh, when you're using water and make sure if you're building your own loop, do not use anything apart from distilled water or certified uh, liquids for water cooling because uh, there's a risk of uh, galvanic corrosion occurring in a liquid loop that can damage your cooling components. But if you're just starting off with liquid cooling, I recommend highly just going for an AIO because they are much more much easier to install and you don't have to worry about selecting the correct parts for it because it's as the name suggests it's all in one package. Now let's talk about performance of the two different types of coolers. So the main difference is is that air cooling when you use air cooling your temperatures uh, spike up much faster. So like if you put a load on your CPU such as like rendering a video uh, that'll make it, that'll max out the load on your CPU. The air cooler will get to the maximum temperature much faster because it's just because uh, metal transfers heat much faster than water does. However, with that being said, with water, the temps would get to the same uh, maximum state as the air. However, it'll take longer to do so because water transfers heat much much slower. 
but performance of the two is basically the same. It With water cooling, all your performance depends on is the size of your radiator. So what many people recommend is having at least 120 millimeters of radiator size for uh, for each component that you're using, that you're liquid cooling. And then another extra 120 millimeters if you decide to overclock the component which you are liquid cooling. Because if you are liquid cooling, you can also add your GPU into the loop, which will add more heat, so you'll need more radiator size to account for that. But other than that, I think that this is a good basic understanding of how coolers work, and this will help you decide on what kind of cooler to choose for your next build. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you want to know anything else about PCs and such, go check out my other videos. Thank you for watching again.